I'm Peter Watkins. I started off uh, with Marconi Marine as a radio officer way back in about 1960. <coughs> I then, um, after about four years of that, became a teacher teaching physics in local schools. Uh, but when I retired, um, I came here to um, Sanford Mill um, and helped out as a volunteer. And one of the first jobs I was involved in was making a recreation of a ship's radio room from the 60s, something I hadn't had anything to do with for a long time. And what's this wonderful set here? Well, uh, you're now standing in the uh, hut from which the original broadcasts for regular broadcasts were made. Um, in fact, the start of the BBC really here. Uh, and this is the transmitter. It's a copy of the transmitter which uh, was used for those early broadcasts. This is called the uh, 2MT transmitter. Full stop. Date? 1922. And you reproduced it what year? Only months ago. I'm How long working did it take on you? I started work on this uh, just before Christmas. Christmas what? 2015? The, the most recent one. 2015? Yeah, 2015. Mm -hmm. And you've only just... This is the first public showing? Yes. I only put the vows in yesterday. Very carefully with gloves, I would imagine. <laughs> carefully. Well, well, first of all, without the uh, gift about six months ago of a local person uh, of the valves, this project wouldn't have been possible. But these are the original valves and um, over here we've got the power supply so um, we would have power coming in for a generator. I mean basically this uh, hut was in a field and so they uh, produced power using an old Austin engine and a generator and that would have been fed into this transformer here and um, this would have been part of the process of converting this to a DC voltage of something like 10,000 volts. Very powerful. <coughs> yeah. Um, over here, this is the um, transmitter. Uh, at the top we've got the oscillator, which defines the frequency. And then below it, we've got the modulating side of things, which takes a signal from a microphone and feeds it via another amplifier to the main oscillator. For there we go across to the uh, tuning coils and so on which in turn are connected to the aerial. What exactly is it? Well it's a, a transmitter transmitting speech so it um, as I say the, the first broadcasts were uh, written uh, uh, broadcast in response to amateur radio enthusiasts who had heard broadcast test broadcasts and wanted to hear more the gpo wanted to put the lid on it but um, marconi uh, was asked to produce these broadcasts uh, for just half an hour once a week on tuesday night about eight o'clock and um, so that's where where the broadcast started. Repeat that again because that's so interesting. So these transmitters <coughs> came about because? They came about because amateur radio enthusiasts wanted to, uh, to tune into uh, and test their radios. Um, so Marconius was asked to produce a, a transmitter uh, for that purpose. And uh, who wanted to put a lid on it? The GPO. Why? Well, the GPO, A, they weren't very keen on broadcasting generally, um, but uh, it did interfere with other services like um, radio direction finding for aircraft. In fact, the people who designed this were also involved in making um, radio direction finding equipment for aircraft and f the very first communications equipment for aircraft. So. It's, it's a sort of historic in two directions. So it's the start of the radio for uh, aeronautical purposes and also the start of broadcasting. So when was this equipment, what year was this equipment invented and what was the purpose of it? 
Well, the basically the transmitter was made from earlier old transmitters and cobbled together by these engineers. At New Street? At, no, here in the hut. They weren't paid a lot to do it. It was almost done out of hours, so to speak, uh, as an extra. And they weren't paid, I don't think they paid anything for actually doing it. Um, so it was, uh, so these various bits were collected from various sites in New Street and so on, and the transmitter put together. When it finished transmitting at the end of about a year, uh, what years are we talking about? We're talking about 1922, uh, going through to a year later. And then the transmissions from London, from 2LO, took over from this transmitter, which had the call sign 2MT, and is quite often known as 2Emma Tock. Right, so that's where that comes from. So how did you get the, where did the, where was the creative juice, where did the idea come from of make, remaking this, reproducing it, how did it all happen? What was the germ of the idea? Well basically the, the main reason for it was we've got the hut, but it seemed to me that without the transmitter it was the, the heart of the thing, without that. I mean we do mean to expand on it. We, we, we've got other equipment that we can show and also there's an audio side to it so I'd like to play uh, the sort of uh, music and, um, uh, and speech that were played from the original transmitter in 1922. It's a non-working model. This is a non-working. Where on earth and who on earth saved those valves dating back to the 1920s. Well again I, I don't know whether he would like me to tell you his name but it's a, a local person and um, who he definitely saved them in the who bottom, donated bottom wall. Them. Yes that's right. They must have been carefully packed away. Oh yes. But yes. saved from the skip. Yes yes. And he said I've got it and you must have been shocked to the bone. We were we were amazed to get what we did. I mean it's not just this we've got a lot of other stuff as well. Has surfaced. Yes yeah. Yeah. And this, who would have broadcast from this? Dame Nellie Melba? No, no, that's, there's a lot of confusion there. Dame Nellie Melba was employed by the Daily Mail to give a broadcast from the New Street factory in 1920. That was a one-off and that was using a much more powerful transmitter. So this transmitter has got a power of about 250 watts. The one that was used at New Street had a power of 6,000 watts, so it's a much more powerful setup. Does this predate it? Um, no, not, not in terms of broadcasting. So this 1922, Nelly Melba 1920. So why is it less powerful? Because it didn't have to be. Well, again, it was only intended for uh, calibration purposes and for to respond for the needs of amateurs. I mean, uh, probably it would have been picked up by crystal sets in a 10 mile radius, but it was picked up by more sophisticated valve sets as far away as Scotland. So um, that's the kind of range we're talking about. How do you know what it used to look like, the original? How do we know what the original looked like? Well, look at the photograph, here it is. It's largely done from that. It's scaled off. Um from the photograph. Amazing. Where did you get the ancillary bits and pieces? Did you did you make them on the lathe? Yes, I made most of the bits and pieces. This this um, is a, not complete, but it's a mock-up of a transformer, and that was made from Chris Chapman, who's a, a cars chairman, who you'll find in the other room there. So he made that for us. Um, most of the other bits I made at home and. Why can't you make something that works? Well, um, uh, the, the, the operating voltage of these uh, valves is 10,000 volts. So little children putting their fingers near those, that would be the end of them. So I think there's a safety problem there. But 
long term, I hope we will be able to make, or I won't make it because I'm not up to it, but um, I hope we'll get somebody from cars to make a, a transmitter which will produce the goods using modern techniques, but able to broadcast on that date, the 22nd, uh, sorry, the uh, year 2022, um, uh, reproducing that early broadcast. So that would be nice for that to happen. This is a broadcasting device. Where, where's the microphone? What did they well, use they, they did use a microphone, what is called a carbon microphone, uh, which we do have one of those, but it's not here at the moment. It was also had a Morse key as well. So tell me about that. Is that looks like a bit like a key? What's it, is that the key? this this thing here? Yeah. Oh no, this is this is a variable inductor. It's just um, a coil that you can change the, f the setting of that. Is that the Morse key? No, no, no. These are switches. These would be used to switch the power on to various parts of the circuit. I mean, one's got to remember that, as I say, we're working at 10,000 volts, and these guys would be sort of sitting here waving their arms around, and quite often probably uh, receiving a bit of a shock in the process. I mean, Is that why they were called sparks? <laughs> Well, not really, not here, <laughs> no. Um, what are those made, where were those bowls, that, you know, where were they made? These, these are made in Chelmsford, well, originally. Which they, factory? They were designed in Chelmsford. Uh, the, there was a particularly uh, clever engineer called Round, Captain Round later, and um, he designed many of these valves. The prototypes were probably made in Chelmsford, but the production runs were made at Hammersmith, I think, and elsewhere. So, um, but really, uh, EUV would also be involved in the early days. So, um, you know, the EUV were making all kinds of valves for Marconi. You are looking at a very historic piece of equipment, and that Chelmsford, you could say, is at the start of a uh, and then uh, a second industrial revolution and as such I think it deserves much greater recognition so I hope that um, in the course of time we'll be able to develop this and um, you know people would come from all over the world to see it if they knew it existed and um, you know could, knew what they could see. So a uh, same size reproduction doesn't exist anywhere this is unique? It is yes using the original valves, yes. the glass globes there, would they have been blown through a tube uh, to make them? I, th I think some types of valves, there's a certain amount of glass blowing goes on, how they made the overall, uh, overall uh, shape, I imagine there was some kind of mould that they blew into, uh, but you can see here on the edge of the valve a kind of pip that would be where the air would have been sucked out of the valve and then it melted to seal it off. I yeah. hope uh, they get the recognition they deserve. Mm. Thank you very much. Well, thank you.